Welcome to another video. Let's talk about the powers of phi. Phi is the golden ratio. I used it in the last calculus problem that I solved, but I got some comments and I actually thought it was good for me to talk about it because I just used it. I didn't explain how the formula came about. Well, we call it the golden ratio, but when Euclid, about 300 BC, discovered it, he called it the extreme and mean ratio because it was something he observed from polygons. Like if you take a pentagon, for example, and you do this. Let's say this is, you got a pentagon like this. And you join the diagonals like this to this. Let's say, this is a terrible pentagon. I'm sure this is not a perfect pentagon. But what Euclid was saying is that each of these diagonals cuts the other one. So if you take from here to here, let's call this, um, say it is A, and call from here to here B. The ratio of, B, of A to B is the ratio of the entire length. So we're saying that if you add A to B, A plus B, divided by A is the same thing as the longer part divided by the shorter part, which is A over B. This was Euclid's observation, and this is the golden ratio. Let's get into the video. So now we see that if we have a total length of from here to here, which is A plus B, we can establish that the golden ratio according to Euclid's observation from the polygon, especially from, from the pentagon, is going to be A divided by B is the same thing as if you have A plus B, the entire length, divided by the longer side. As you can see, I divided in a way that A is bigger than B. Now that ratio you get is the golden ratio. Okay, so we have, we can say that the golden ratio is actually A over B, and it's also equal to A plus B over A. Okay, so now, what is the actual number we obtain? Well, let's do the math from here. You can see, we have this equals this equals this. Let's try to do some math, okay? We know this is the same thing as phi. Can we get another phi here? Yes, so look, it's more like saying that phi is equal to this guy, but this guy is, we can split it up into A over A plus B over A. Well, but B over A is the reciprocal of A over B. So we can say that phi equals A over A is one, and B over A is just the reciprocal of phi, one over phi. If we multiply each of the terms by phi, we'll end up with phi squared equals phi plus one. And if we collect every term to the left-hand side, we have phi squared minus phi minus one is equal to zero. So we can solve a quadratic equation because this cannot be factored. Because you can't factor this, we're gonna have um, the solution phi using the quadratic formula minus b, or b in this case is one, so it's gonna be one, plus or minus the square root of b squared. b squared is gonna be one, negative one squared, which is gonna be one, minus four ac, which is plus four. So you end up with five here, over two times one, which is over two. So, the golden ratio has two options. It is either it is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 or 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. Let's clean this up. So, we have phi equals 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Well, remember that what we were looking for was the ratio of two sides. The sides of anything or length of anything is always positive. So you can't divide two positive things and get a negative. The other option is gonna be one minus the square root of two over two, or square root of five over two, which will be negative, and we cannot take that option, 0 0.618. So we take this one, which is 1.618. This is 
the golden ratio. And it's approximately um, 1.618. Okay. But something you want to remember, because we're going to use it, is this fact here. You see it? The square of phi is basically phi plus one. I need to write this better, okay? Because we're gonna need this fact. Uh, come on. Okay, so the square of phi is phi plus one. Remember, we got that just by the, from, definition, from the definition. So now, if we go back here and we wanna do the powers of phi, let's see. What is phi? To the zero. Well, if I'm using n, well, let's, let's just say we start from zero. That's obvious, okay? So phi to the zero is going to be one. Right? Nice. Phi to the one is just phi. Phi squared is just phi plus one. What about phi cubed? Well, we know that phi cubed is phi times phi squared is the product of these two, right? That's how you get the third one. So it's going to be phi times phi plus one. But if your math is good, you know this is going to be phi squared plus phi, right? So this is going to be equal to phi squared plus phi. But what did we say phi squared was again? Phi squared is phi plus one. So this means you're getting phi plus one plus phi. Okay, phi plus one plus phi, which gives you two phi plus one. So let me, because I'm going to erase this so that every time we bring up something, I'm just gonna write it here. So now let's find phi to the fourth. Let's get rid of this. So phi to the fourth is gonna be Phi times, or it's going to be 5 squared squared. Okay, maybe we don't want to do that. We can actually do that, you know, but it's okay. We're just going to say it is 5 squared. If you square it, it's, what is 5 squared? It's going to be 5 plus 1 squared, which is going to give you 5 squared plus 2 phi plus 1. Nice. But what is 5 squared? 5 squared again is 5 plus 1. So this is gonna be equal to phi plus one plus two phi plus one, which gives you three phi plus two. So if we go here, we're gonna write three phi plus two. You're beginning to see something about the Fibonacci sequence. We're generating the Fibonacci sequence on both sides. We just shifted one down, look. The Fibonacci sequence here is, forget about this one, let's just, just isolate this. You got one, one, two, three. You see that? On the right hand side you have one, one, so we can predict that if we do our math, this is gonna be three, and this is gonna be the next term in the Fibonacci sequence. Remember the Fibonacci sequence? Um, let's write it here. One, one, two, three, five, eight, three. 18, 21, 34, 55, and that's how all the, se the, se the Fibonacci sequence, how do you get it? The first term starts from one, the next term is the sum of the last two terms, nothing plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, five three plus five is eight, and that's the Fibonacci sequence. Um, we're gonna do five, of five, and I think this is the last one I'm going to do, and then we draw our conclusion. I'm not going to be doing mathematical induction. Make that an exercise for yourself to see if you can establish that it's going to follow the same pattern. You can actually see it because you're going back. It's a recursive formula, so you have to count on the previous one, which is the exact same thing we're doing. So this is going to be phi to the fourth times phi, which is equal to three phi plus two, three phi plus two, multiplied by phi, right? Okay, what does that give us? It gives us three phi squared plus two phi. Well, that's gonna be three times, what is phi squared? Phi squared again is phi plus one. Phi plus one plus two phi, 
which is going to be 6 phi plus 3 plus 2 phi. Well, that gives us 8 phi plus 3. Does that look like what we predicted? That this is going to be what's going on? What did I do? We're on 5. Now there's something not right. 3 phi plus 2 phi. It's 3 phi plus 2 phi, not 6 phi. It's 3 phi. Come on. 3 phi. <laughs> My mind was racing. Okay, so this is going to be um, 5 phi. So we got 5 phi here equals 5 phi plus the number is 3. So as you can see, the pattern that's building on the left is the same pattern that's building on the right. It's just that the one on the right is shifted down one. And that's the prediction. So we can say by observation, okay, <laughs> no mathematical induction, don't ask for it. Phi to the n will be equal to, notice how this is the fifth term of the Fibonacci sequence. The first term is one, one, two, three, five. So it is the fifth term of the Fibonacci sequence multiplied by phi, okay? Plus the fourth term of the Fibonacci sequence because this is shifted down one. So this is gonna be F of N minus one. This was the fact I used in that video and um, here is the explanation for it. I hope this, um, at least, if I didn't give you all the information you need, now you can go do your own research and find it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.